This tutorial is either a re-edit of an older tutorial just to sort of trim down the size of it or is a complete remake if Affinity Photo Affinity Designer has changed quite significantly from when I originally made it and tools are not quite working in the same way as they used to. In this remake of a 2017 video I want to look at comparing the macros which you can make in the photo persona and the presets that you can use in the develop persona. Um, and I'm trying to aim f to sort of make it fairly easy on myself. I'm trying to aim for a vintage sepia type look and this is the look I got using the macros and this was the look I got using the presets. Now they're not exactly the same. Um, the adjustments are slightly different in each persona but they're sort of as close as I could get using similar settings. Um, so I'm going to look at making the macros first and this video is mainly aimed at beginners um, so I'm going to first of all open up the macro and library so if we come up to view to studio and library and then back to the view menu studio and macro so if I come to the, my library tab if I come a bit further down here um, as you can see I've got there are three um, macros which I made for the original video and one which I made in a test run this morning for this video um, so there has been some slight changes into the way I'm doing this but it really shouldn't be that much different but so first thing I'm going to need I'm going to make a new category for the macro um, so if I click on this menu icon up here and I've got create new category and that should be down here in the bottom it's just called macros and if I click on the menu there I can rename it and just for ease I'm just going to call it the five A's and click OK because I'm going to, as I've already got this macro, I don't need it again. So once I finish this video, I will delete it. But I would advise you to sort of, if you're going to make the macro, you know, name the category according to what you need to remember. So we come to the macro tab and we're going to start recording a macro. So I'm going to click on the st red button here to start recording and sort of any adjustments I make and add will be added and recorded. So I'm going to click on, let me just put this in the center a bit so we can see that and I'll click on start recording and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a black and white adjustment and I'm just going to click on the adjustments icon here click black and white as you can see it has recorded that now I'm not going to make any adjustments I'm just going to click on merge which will put this back to being a single layer but black and white then I'm going to come up to filters and I'm going to come to sharpen and clarity and I'm going to set this at 20% and click apply and then I'm going to come to again to filters colors and V 
vignette and exposure I'm going to make minus 2 and hardness I'm going to set at 55 scale I'm going to make that 1, 2, 4 and shape I'm going to leave at 100 and then I'm going to click apply next I want to come back up to filters noise and add noise and I'm going to set this at 20% and make sure that monochromatic is ticked and the Gaussian is selected and click apply and then I want to we're going to resharpen it again I'm going to come to filters sharpen unsharp mask and for this I'm going to leave the I'm going to make the radius 1 and the factor is 2 well in this case it's 2.018 but 2 would probably be ok rather than worrying about the 0 1 8 and the threshold at 50% so click apply and next we're going to come back to the adjustments and I'm going to come up to exposure and I'm going to set this at minus 1 you can type it in or move the slider it's probably easier to type it in and now in the original video I merged this down but I'm not going to now I'm just going to close that and then I'm going to come back to the adjustments and select levels and I'm going to set the black to 5 and the white to 80 and then close that down next another adjustment we come to curves now in this case it, it, it's very hard to give a precise reading of where to put these but I'm going to put I'm going to click where this bottom left and sort of upright lines merge to put an anchor point there and and in this box here which is like three up and three over from the left I'm going to click in roughly about the middle so that point there is anchored and then this top node here I'm just going to drag it down about a quarter of the box width and this bottom one here on the left I'm going to move this up to about half of the box width hopefully that makes sense so you've got this sort of slight S curve and then I can close that and the last adjustment is going to be split toning now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all of these first four boxes at 40 so four, 0 and the last bit of the balance I'm just going to move us to the right and pretty much up to 100 percent 98 percent you can also go the other way to the minus but it's a sort of much darker sort of dirtier sepia and this is a much sort of browner sort of better sepia in my opinion so I can close that down and then I can click on the button up here to stop recording so that is the macro all set up and I 
these four icons up here on the right, the this one here with the little squares and what have you, is add to library. So I'll click on that and find the category which I know is named all those A's and I'll just call this sepia. So okay. So that is, should now be in the library and if I could get down there. There we go. See it's in there. Sepia 14 steps. So that is now saved in the library. So I can sort of clear that and I can also close I can clo I'll close both of them for now so I'll close the library and the macros and I will delete this and I can also delete those other samples. So now we're going to be looking at using the presets in the develop persona. Now normally you can you'd use a develop persona for raw files but it doesn't mean you can't put JPEGs into the develop persona. So if you just click on the third icon at the top here it will move that JPEG into the develop persona. Now you've got five tabs up here and normally you would sort of start on the um, basics tab probably but unlike in macros where you sort of really do have to do things in a certain order for it to record quite well macros are better now than they used to be in, but presets you can sort of do them in any order you want so first thing I'm going to do is set up the black and white in the tones tab and a bit like before I'm not going to make any alterations and then I'm going to come back to the basics tab and exposure I'm going to put on to 0 0.3 and the black point put on 5 and brightness on minus 20 next I want to add shadows and highlights and I'm going to set highlights at 15 and the shadows at minus 12 and still within the basics tab we've got the clarity slider and I'm going to make this 20 and then we're coming back to the tones tab and I'm going to click on the curves and I'm going to do a very similar curve as before put an anchor point there an anchor po point halfway between this box up here move this down about a quarter of a box and move this up to about half of a box if you sort of see what I mean then I guess still on the tones tab I think it's down the bottom here split toning and I'm not going to do 40 on each one like I did in the other one but I've, I found it better to go 40 50 40 50 
but again move the balance slider sort of almost right over to a hundred sort of 95, 96 something like that and then we come to the lens tab and post crop vignette and for this I'm going to just set the intensity to minus 25 and then back to the details tab and we got noise addition and I'm going to set this at 20 percent and make sure that Gaussian is ticked we can leave color unticked and uh, next one is detail refinement again on the same tab and I'm going to put the radius up to 100 and the amount to 30 so that is pretty much sort of the end of that and it will sort of improve when we go back to the photo persona but before that we do have to save the defaults uh, the presets now currently they are all set on default so but you have to save each tab you can't, it's not like a macro where you can just make a whole list and save it once you have to save these all as separately so this menu that's up here you've got add preset and I'm just going to call this sepia 2021 okay and then come to the lens tab add preset So I've saved each of the four tabs as a preset with the same name. There is no way to save opacity uh, overlays, I should say, because they're sort of they are sort of the individual pictures that you add will be different, so the overlays will not have any effect. So that is all of those saved and then I can come back and click develop and then when I come back to the photo persona we have all those effects added so let me just shut that down and I'll just quickly open it again so if I open view menu again and open I'll just open the library this time come down to my AAA category and just click on sepia then macro will do its job now I've left these available in the newer version so you can then tailor the settings for the individual pictures you can just double click on exposure and make alterations or the curve or the split tone so in this respect the newer version is better so let me just do control and Z a couple of times and get back to the original and I will shut the library and this time I will move this into the develop persona and although the preset is like listed you will sort of 
ever. You will have to come back to the default and then back to the preset. So this was still happening in the early versions of Affinity Photo and it's still happening in the new version. So back to default and then sepia setting. Last one being tones, and when I develop that, that will get me back to where I was. So, with macros in the photo persona, you record like the steps that you want, and you can leave certain files open so you can make further adjustments. In the presets in the develop persona, you probably do have more, for want of a better phrase, ways of refining a picture in the develop persona. But you've got a lot of mucking around having to save all the presets in the different tabs, and when you want to use them, going through each tab and loading the preset that you want. But like I said, you probably do have a, a bit more. A sort of a, a end up with a much more refined picture and just to prove let me close this down I should have this listed here as the original raw file so if I click on that there we go now obviously I, I haven't cropped this and rotated it and made it straight but I just want to show you that with the raw file again I'm going to have to go through the process of going back to default back to the sepia which is a bit long winded and then develop because the raw file had much more information in it than the JPEG did the result would be different but as you can see the presets were there ready to use on the raw file so yeah, that is how you can use that with raw files now the difference is with macros I can make them save them and pass them on to other people presets can only be used within the affinity photo you got on your computer you can't save them and pass them on to other people so in that respect macros are better um, I will make downloadable the four sepia uh, macros the original three I made and the one I've made this morning um, and the link for that will be in the description for this video so hopefully that covers everything oh I just want to let me close that down just show you sort of this working on a different picture just so you can see how it works so again I'll open the library because I, I do have it on keyboard shortcut and if I click on the macro there, that is the macro used on that image and I could then come in and tinker with the settings however you want to do this because they are still all available and you, know, just, you could have added it to the develop persona and used the presets so basically that is everything so thank you for watching and goodbye